Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. If I got a video for you to help you hit your driver absolutely fantastic, you're gonna feel like this thing is a weapon. And all we have to do is a few simple things that all great drivers of the golf ball do. And once we incorporate that technique, driving is gonna to get to be fun. Now, the first one is we need to be behind the golf ball. So when I measure tour pros, they come down into impact, their head is well behind the golf ball. They're almost looking at the golf ball from behind it like this. I see a lot of players when they're hitting drivers, especially drivers that are very poor drivers of the golf ball, they'll get that head in front, and now all of a sudden my nose is over the golf ball or in front of the golf ball, and I'm gonna start to chop down, or I'm gonna back up out of my posture, I'm gonna flip it, I'm gonna do all these things that I don't wanna do. So let's go ahead and do a little trick here It's gonna help us get in the right position. I wanna play the ball on kind of the inside of my left foot. The exact position is up to you. You can move it around, but anywhere up there is good. I'm gonna take a stance that's slightly wider than shoulder width, that way I can get some good power into the shot. And I'm gonna put my hands with my fingertips even on my thighs. So I mean my fingertips are at the same level here as I set up. I'm straight up and down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt and I'm gonna let my hips go forward, my upper body go back slightly. That's gonna take my shoulders and tilt them a little bit more this way. And my fingertips on my right hand are gonna come down until they're just above my knee or my right knee. So I'm gonna slide them down this way. Now they're just above my knee. My left hand is gonna be moving up my leg like this as that happens. And now I've got my body in the perfect angle to be able to hit this ball from the inside and be really shallow. So now that I'm here, I'm behind the golf ball now, I feel like I'm gonna stay there the entire time. It's gonna help me to get in from the slot. And if you look from face on, you're gonna see that I'm not moving around all over this. I can really stay in that one position. Even though I'm getting a little weight shift, my head is staying there, which is gonna make me very consistent. Now, if you do this correct, you should be able to hit a nice power draw out there because your body's in the position to make that happen. Let's go ahead and try that out. There we go, crush that one. Felt really nice, stay from the inside, 306. Great club head speed and ball speed, so really nice shot. Now, if you're not set up in the right way, if you don't have your body behind the golf ball and you're in front like that, I find that you'll fight that forever. If you'll try all these other tips and your body's just out of position, it's gonna to be too hard to do the other things you wanna do. So maybe if you're sliding in front and you're steep, well, it's gonna to be tough to get from the inside shallowed out if I'm sliding in front. So fix that one piece first. Keep your head behind the golf ball. Now you're in position to where you can do the other things that great golf balls, golf drivers do. So let's go ahead and do five reps of this. Again, slide your fingers down to your right fingers above your knee. Do that and make a practice swing. Do five reps of that so you get the feeling of it. Then you can go ahead and start hitting some golf balls. Now the second piece of it, makes it really easy to get shallowed out and from the inside. Makes it almost foolproof to do this. Now I have an impact bag here, and if you want this exact impact bag, this is my favorite one. Eyeline Golf makes this one. It has a couple slants for your irons. It's very durable. Love this impact bag. I'll put a link in the description or somewhere on this page. If you buy one of these from that link, we get a few bucks, helps us to make these great videos for you. Keep on making this great content. But if not, use a pillow, use a rolled up towel, you can use whatever you want to to make this happen. This is just the one that I prefer. So I'm gonna put it one foot behind my golf ball and it's gonna be in line with my golf ball. So what I mean by that is, if I put a club on the edge of this impact bag on this wall of it, it should be lined up with my golf ball here. Now that allows me to swing from the inside, miss this impact bag, and get that nice draw without ever hitting it. Now, if I start to lean in front again, like we talked about, I start to get steep on the downswing, I'm gonna be chopping down in that impact bag. It's, it's in the way. Now, be careful to give yourself a little bit extra space at the beginning, and then gradually scoot that forward if you're an over-the-top player. Again, I'm gonna do my tilt, and then from here, here's what I'm gonna feel. I'm gonna feel like, now that my body is behind it, I've cleared out an alley for me to swing this way. Now, that's exaggerated. I wanna feel like this club is almost on this wall back here and then swinging out to that wall over there. Now that's not really happening, but I can tell you the number of people that I see that over shallow the club, almost zero. The number of people that I see that get too steep and out here, almost 100%, right? So let's go ahead and exaggerate this. I've got my body in a good position now. I'm gonna feel like this club gets back on this wall and then swings out toward that wall. Again, not really gonna happen, but that's the feeling that we wanna have. Again here, I'm gonna to try to hit a nice little power draw 
Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, hit that one nice. Started down the right center, drawing back. Couldn't ask for anything better than that. Great distance, 299. Carried 280 in the air. Very happy with that one. Now, I wasn't going 100% at it. I can always kick it up a little bit, but I find this last thing helps you to swing as hard as you want to and not have to worry about that ball coming back. So do your five reps of that again. We got our tilts. We did five reps with the fingertips. We did five reps, club into the wall, club into the wall, missing this impact bag. And now finally, this is the piece that I think makes this easy to do. You see, when you're coming over the top, this right forearm gets high. And as I'm making my downswing, if I'm over the top or steep, you're gonna see my right forearm is kind of covering up my left forearm where you almost can't see it on the camera there. It's blocking it. Now, if I do this correctly and I come from the inside with some good lag, Look how now my right forearm is well underneath my left forearm. You could even have a player put a club shaft between your forearms and kind of set it like that. I won't, have a, I won't be able to do this because I'm just by myself, but I'm gonna have someone even put a club kind of last parallel. They should be able to fit a club between your forearms there. So whenever you pause, last parallel means when my club shaft is parallel to the ground in the downswing, you should be able to fit a golf club through there and not be able to hit it. If I'm steeper, no way I'm getting a club in there. It's gonna feel like I'm snapping that off. Now from there, that puts me in a position where I have this late lag. I'm from the inside, and now I'm gonna feel like I hammer this ball from the inside. Here's what I mean by that. If I had a wall here, let's actually pretend I'm gonna hit this wall. If I was gonna hit this wall with my club, I'd turn the tip of the club out like I got it like an ax. If I come through here, I'd be doing exactly that. Look how my right forearm is lower than my left arm. And then from there, I'm gonna have my hands almost to this wall, and then I'm gonna release the club and hammer it. It feels really powerful. That's the exact same thing you're doing in your golf swing. I'm getting this club lagging from the inside, right forearm below the left, and then I'm gonna hammer that golf ball from the inside the same way that I was hammering the wall right there. Now that's a very powerful feeling for most players, and once you feel that, it's like the light bulb goes off. Now I understand why I have to be behind the golf ball. That's to get me in this position. Now I understand why I can miss this bag and still hit a great shot. That gets me in that same position. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the three things we mentioned. Another five reps of that hammer motion with the right forearm lower, and you've got the feel of exactly what you need to do. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl here. I'm gonna crank this one up a little bit. Let's get a little bit more swing speed on this one. There we go. Went a little harder at that one. Again, the nice draw came from right to left. 318 on that one, club head speed went up to 120. But the best part is, I don't have to worry about it. I know that I can swing as hard as I want to because that ball is gonna come back from right to left because my body's in the right position and my club's working in the right way. I consider driver to be one of my strong suits. I usually hit the, the big stick pretty well. And I'm gonna give you in this video the things that I think about when I'm hitting driver. So I'm gonna go through the keys that, that are in my mind, the visualizations that I have, the feels that I have when I'm gonna hit it. Well, the way I like to visualize this, first and foremost, is for power, I wanna make sure that I get a good shoulder turn. So I don't really mind if I make a short back swing, as long as my hips and my shoulders rotate, and I really wanna feel like this left shoulder gets underneath my chin, so that I'm getting at least 90 degrees, then I'm gonna have power. So for example, if I swing to here with a big shoulder turn, but a short back swing, I'm still gonna be able to have a lot of power. If I Swing way back here, long back swing, but not very much shoulder turn, I'm not gonna have much power. So for me, I really try to have this key. To start my swing, I get a little weight shift to the right, I start feeling like I'm putting some pressure into my right foot, almost before I even swing at all. That kind of starts my back swing. And then I free up my hips. I want my feet to be kind of loose on the ground. My heels should be moving as I'm going back. And I just get that left shoulder under my chin. That way I'm really wound up and I don't really mind if the backswing is here or here or longer. That's the way you're gonna have the power from your body doing that. Most players are a little tight. The key is the left foot. I need to lift that heel slightly to let my hips turn. That allows me to get my shoulder under there, but that's the first thing I'll focus on. If I lose any distance at all, that's what I'm going to. Number two, here's how I visualize my shot shapes. Whenever I'm about halfway in the downswing, when I get this club parallel to the ground, that's the la what I call last parallel, and from here, I visualize in my swing this butt into the club, these last two inches, and how my fingers hold that. Now when I get to here, 
I'm imagining that this butt end of the club actually turns back up. So look how, how it's low almost down here by my thigh right here. And then from there, it's gonna turn back up and that's gonna whip the club on through. So it's that turning up action. If you kind of imagine me swinging this with my hand, I'm gonna have it low and then I'm gonna pull up and around on it and watch that club just kind of fly on through there. That's what I wanna feel like I'm doing when I make a swing. So I'm visualizing that last parallel, these last couple fingers on my hand, I'm turning my body up and in and allowing that club to whip through contact, get a lot of speed through there and that great extension. So if I do this correctly, I open my hips, my shoulders, and I feel a lot of pressure in these last couple fingers, and that gets the club turning back up and in, and the club just flies down the fairway. It feels like it's flying out of my arms. Now, if I wanna hit a draw, I just angle this a little bit different. So here would be a straight shot, a relatively straight. This is pointing toward the target line. If I wanna hit a draw, I just feel like I'm turning that club up and in as I'm going that way. So I'm changing my, if you imagine it being kind of a swing plane, I'm just tilting that swing plane this way. And as I turn that grip up and in, I let the face go ahead and rotate on over. So now you can see with the draw, again, I'm just focusing on this part of the club. I'm turning it up and it's just whipping the club out to the right. And I feel like the momentum of the face is just gonna turn on over as this club kind of rolls over in my hands. It's very simple there. If I wanna hit a straighter one, I'm gonna come here, turn it up and in, and it's gonna be a more square face. And if I wanna hit a bit of a fade, I come here, it's a little bit more outside. I turn this grip back up and in, so I've shifted the plane this way, and the face stays a little bit more open like this. So it doesn't roll on over that direction, it stays a little bit more open. So I'm swinging left, and the face is slightly more this way as I'm swinging through there. That's the visualization that I have. And then finally, the last key for me is finish off the swing. This is one of those where if I quit on the swing and I have short arms and I kind of keep my shoulders down, it's not gonna be very good. I wanna feel like I'm really getting that club to whip through contact, really extend, and then my right shoulder finishes all the way to the target as I'm coming through there. Same thing with a backswing. If we wanna have rotation in the downswing, I've gotta move the feet. So notice how my right heel is well up off the ground. I've even let my left foot rotate outwards, outwards slightly, so now it's facing more to the target. If you wanna start with it toward the target, that's completely fine too. So really it's those three key, key checkpoints. Number one, if I'm not hitting it very far, I let my feet and hips move and I get that shoulder under my chin. Doesn't matter how far back this goes, as long as the body turns, that's gonna get you loaded up really nice for some great power. Number two, I control my shot shape and the momentum of the club, big thing is momentum by the butt end of this club. If you don't have the momentum of the club whipping through contact and releasing, it's not gonna work. So I focus in on this part of the club, getting it low and letting it at least release this way or that swing plane this direction for a draw, here for a straight shot, and then there for a fade. Finally, I finish my swing for it to be really nice and straight. Let me go ahead and hit a nice draw. That's what most players wanna do. So I'm gonna make a good shoulder turn. I'm gonna have it here, turn the club, the butt end of the club up and in to go out that way. Really let that face release, and I'm gonna finish my follow through to be nice and consistent. See how we do. There we go. Hit that one nice and hard. Really felt like I finished my backswing and I finished my fall through and then I just relied on the momentum of the club to release that and let the club snap right on through there. Let's make this driver a whole heck of a lot easier. Where you set up over top of the golf ball and you just know you're gonna hit one solid and right down the middle, nice little draw on it. Well, there's one move that really is a game changer for almost all players that I see and that's this right elbow move. So when I make a swing, I want to feel like my body opens up and my elbow is tucked in the inside of this elbow. My club head is going to lag behind. That's what's going to get it in the slot here. So as that elbow starts to go forward, that drops the club in the slot. I'm on plane. Everything's coming from the inside. Very easy to hit really nice, consistent shots. So let's give it a whirl here. And then I got three different drills that are going to make this just very intuitive for you. All right, let's go ahead and try it out. There we go. That one couldn't have felt much more solid. I mean, I feel like all I have to do is rotate through there and it's completely natural. So first to get the feel for this, let's just take the, the club in the right hand only. And what I'm feeling like when I make that swing is I'm feeling like my body is just opening up. So I feel my left hip turning out of the way. If I was to go toward the camera like this, 
I'm feeling like my left hip clears out of the way, and that's what brings the, the arms and the shoulders forward. I'm feeling like my left shoulder is also clearing out of the way. Like if you're going to skip a stone or throw a, throw a ball sidearm, that's the exact feeling that you'd have. This is all clearing to bring the elbow in. And then my elbow, or if you imagine that I had a little pointer sticking out from my elbow, like this, so if I'm looking at my elbow pit, this will be my hand facing inwards like this, the actual pit there. I want that facing upwards. That's called external rotation. The way that you can feel this, if you put your arm and bend it at 90 degrees, you'd go ahead and rotate your arm outward as far as you can. Most people can go a little farther than me, get over here. I just have a little bit limited shoulder flexibility. Now from there, the inside of your elbow would now be facing the target if we're standing in this direction. And if you imagine this as an arrow, as I'm coming down, I want that arrow facing the target for as long as possible. So my body is opening up, but my inside of my elbow is facing the target. If I do that toward the camera here, it would look just like this. So my body's clearing out of the way, but that elbow's facing forward. Now, the wrist positions are really tricky when doing this for most players. So let me give you something that's really intuitive to get those wrist positions. If you have a Frisbee, a dinner plate, a paper plate, doesn't really matter. I'm just showing this to give the example. You don't have to do this, but if you've got something like this, it makes it really easy. I just went to the sporting goods store and picked this up just for this video. So if I'm throwing this Frisbee, if I was gonna throw this Frisbee sidearm like that, I would naturally get in that wrist position. So as I start to open up, you'll see now, left side of the body clears out of the way, inside of the elbow is coming forward, but look at the Frisbee. I don't have it flat wrist like this. I got the Frisbee angled back so that now as I come through, I can release the wrist and get that to go down the fairway or what would be down the fairway as I'm doing that. Now, that's exactly what you want to feel in the golf swing. Wrist angled back, inside of the elbow leading, and then bam, you just let it release. There's a specific point that you release this in. Actually, I released that one too much down the fairway. In golf, what you really want to do, if I'm swinging toward this golf ball on the ground, let's go ahead and just set one on the ground here for example's sake. If I'm swinging toward this golf ball, I actually want to have that elbow tucked, club angled back, and I'm going to release toward a golf ball about 45 degrees in front. So if I was to draw a line from my chest, 45 degrees, this being vertical, zero degrees, this being parallel with the ground, 90 degrees, 45 degrees in front is about where I'm going to release it. I actually studied over 50 major winners and measured, and every single one of them averaged releasing up in front of the golf ball somewhere up in there. They averaged between 20 and 50 degrees, that range, that was the range that they're in, and their average was 41 degrees in front. So getting a little bit too wrapped up in the details there, what that's really telling me is all these pros had this club lagging behind like that Frisbee, and they all release that club to where now the club angle didn't have an angle in my right wrist. My right wrist is flat, about 45 degrees in front. So if I had that Frisbee again, I would be thinking about throwing that Frisbee right out toward this golf ball out in front. I have another little device here that'll give you the same idea. It's like a, it breaks in a baseball glove. Again, saw this at the Sporting Goods store, thought this would be a great intuitive way of feeling this. So if I was gonna lag behind, elbow in, wrist back like that, I'm now gonna go ahead and throw that, and if I do that correctly, this will just shoot down and hit that golf ball. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that, but that's a sensation that I feel like I'm gonna have. I got lucky on my first throw there, but that's exactly what a golf swing is. Letting that lag behind, elbow in, and then I'm releasing that out in front. Now, there's one final drill. If those haven't got it for you, this is really gonna help because it's, a lot of that depends on body rotation. Now, what I couldn't do is I couldn't throw out that direction if my body was closed. So nobody would throw like this across their body with their hips and shoulders not opening. A big key to making this work is clearing the body out of the way so you can get that elbow in and throw it out there. This final drill really helps with that. Now, what I can do is I'm gonna set up with this club in front of my body. I'm gonna stand straight up and down, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn until this club would be kind of coming down in line with my right foot. So I'm turning probably maybe 60 degrees this way. Doesn't make a, a big difference how far you go, but about like that. Then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and put this club on the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my body now until that club squares up. So you can see it's actually turning in. 
So it's coming from the inside, or what would be the slot. And as I rotate my body, that squares it up. So if we're looking from this direction, it would look like this. There's my club on the ground. And then I'm gonna turn my body. I'm rotating my hips and my shoulders to get that to be square or going down my target line now. If I'm looking from face on again, same thing. Put it on the ground, rotate the body. Left shoulder and left hip clear out of the way, just like we were talking about. And now that squares it up where I'm in that same exact position that we were just working on with the Frisbee, with the, the golf, uh, or with the uh, baseball mitt uh, thing that breaks it in. Those are all three giving you the same feeling. Now once you tie that together, now I want you to focus in on just that right elbow. This is gonna be your swing key. Getting that toward the target as long as possible and then releasing the hand as it comes on through there. Let's go ahead and give one a whirl again. You'll see I have a ton of lag. I really have, it's so easy to get the club in the slot when you're doing this, as you see from some of my slow motions. But this just makes it completely intuitive to get from the inside and make a good golf swing. There we go. Really couldn't hit one much better than that, right down the middle of the fairway. Now, there's one problem with this. There's one piece that I left out of here. This is gonna teach you how to tuck that elbow in, get the wrist lagging behind, everything releasing out in front, just like all the pros are doing. But there's one thing that almost everybody gets wrong when they're doing this. See, most players are used to squaring the club face up by pushing the hands like this. And when we get rid of that pushing, and we all of a sudden get into that lagging, tons of lag and getting the elbow leading, that face is wide open. So if I'm used to flipping, and all of a sudden I get that elbow tucked in, Look how the face is wide open now. Now there's a specific way that the pros are using their wrist that allows them to get that elbow tucked, get in the slot, be a really great hit shot, but still have that face square up to the target line like I'm seeing here. Now I'm gonna teach you exactly how to use the wrist properly. Specific way you use the left wrist to get it nice and flat or even bowed like this. And a specific way you use the right wrist to get those knuckles back just like the pros are getting once and for all. Elbow in, knuckles back. Ooh, that's the key to really some great golf. It's called the tennis racket drill, and I'm gonna play a preview of it here in just one second. When you see that preview, all you need to do is go ahead and click one of the cards that pops up on the screen somewhere. Or if you don't see that card, don't worry, just go down to the link down below in the description, and you'll get instant access. Once you get it in the slot, we gotta get that wrist angle. Put those two things together, now you're from the inside, you've got tons of lag, and you've got that nice tight draw every single time. Best of luck, let's go ahead and get started in the tennis racket drill right now. Good player problems, we're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players, is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it. The flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm gonna be rotating.